Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to cover topic 5.2, deficiency diseases and diet. In this unit, we are still covering topic 5, animal nutrition. So we are still learning about the human diet, how to test for the major components of the human diet, which we did in previous lessons. And in the future, we're going to look into the human alimentary canal and how it is involved in processing of food. Let's do a recap session of what we have learned so far. So we covered 5.1 nutrients, learning objective C, which talks about listing the principal sources of. Remember that principal sources means where you can find these nutrients, and we're supposed to describe the dietary importance, which is giving reason to why we need these nutrients in our body. So we have to look at carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, C and D only, mineral salts, calcium and iron only, fiber, like roughage, for example, and water. So what are the importance and what are the sources of these nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins? So for carbohydrate, the main importance of carbohydrate is actually to make energy by or through cellular respiration. Remember that cellular respiration is not breathing in and out. Breathing in and out is inhalation and exhalation and that's just the exchange of gases. The, the main point of breathing in is that you can get oxygen gas. And that oxygen gas is actually used in this process, cellular respiration, along with the glucose from carbohydrate where you break down that glucose and in the presence of oxygen to produce energy in the form of ATP and you actually get the products, the waste products, carbon dioxide and water. So what are these sources of carbohydrate? There are two things we're looking at here, which is a polysaccharide, a bigger one called starch. And we can find starch in potatoes, cereals, rice, beans and peas, and yam. And we can also find simple sugars like monosaccharides and disaccharides in honey, cane, and fruits. Fat is also important for energy and actually has a higher energy content than carbohydrates. Fat is used in a way that it is stored in the skin to provide us insulation. And also fat is stored around the kidney and major organs to prevent shock. So for example, if you were to fall, the fat surrounding the organs provide like a cushion to absorb the impact. Some sources of fat, you can find them in meat, dairy food, egg yolk, avocado, and nuts. Protein is important for repair of worn out tissues. Um, this means that if you have some, for example, like a cut or even your red blood cells, they are already tired or even the white blood cells. Protein is important to make those cells as well. It is also important for growth. Sources of protein, you can find them in meat, beans and peas, fish, egg whites, and peanuts. Now let's look into the importance and sources of vitamins, minerals, fiber, and water. For vitamins, we're looking at vitamin C, D, and the minerals, just calcium and iron. So vitamin C, the importance is for healthy gums and teeth, and you can find them in fresh citrus fruits and cabbage. Vitamin D, it's important to uh, for the uptake of calcium in the gut. So this means that vitamin D is needed for you to even absorb calcium. And the gut here we're talking about is in the small intestine. Vitamin D is also important for strong bone and teeth formation. Sources of vitamin D is fresh liver, egg yolk, and also action of the sun on the skin. That's why they say that around 10 a.m. is really good for you because that's where you get your vitamin D. Minerals like calcium, the importance of this is also healthy bones and teeth. Remember that you need vitamin D to help you to absorb calcium. Calcium is also important for muscle action. This means that you need to have minerals for your muscles to move. It's also important uh, for blood clotting. 
So what this shows right here, this is a blood vessel and you can see those like yellow stuff there. So those are what we call, I think those are the platelets, but to form this, this is kind of like a scab. So to form this, you call this clotting. You need calcium for that. So it helps that if you have a cut anywhere internally or even externally, you need calcium. The sources of calcium is flour and milk. And for the mineral iron, the importance is the formation of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the red, red pigment that you can find in red blood cells. Sources of iron is liver, red meat, and even the vegetable spinach has a lot of iron. Fiber is important to form bulk to allow peristalsis. So this gif right here shows you what peristalsis is. It's actually the muscle contraction and relaxation. So you have actually two sets of muscles, circular and longitudinal. And when they contract and relax, they kind of like make this like pushing kind of motion and that helps to move the food um, throughout your digestive system. But you need to have something solid. So if you don't have anything there, then you're going to get constipation. So you need something solid to help it really get pushed and fiber kind of acts like that so it kind of like a like a baseball it helps to kind of like have that solid for you to be able to push the food down the digestive tract so it is really important to prevent constipation sources of fiber is you can find it in fruit vegetable and nuts and lastly water is also a nutrient and it's important because it acts as a solvent for chemical reactions. And an example of chemical reaction in your body is enzyme action. Enzymes actually speed up chemical reactions and for them to form this lock and key, um, what do you call this, enzyme substrate complex, you need it to move, isn't it? The substrate needs to move to the enzyme and you need to have that solvent for it to be able to move and water is also important to cool your body down for example if you went for a run and then you drink a really cold ice water and it feels so much better you feel colder and not too hot anymore sources of water drinks any drinks that you like and also all foods contain water too hey now moving into new stuff. So we need to understand the concept of what a balanced diet is, and this is learning objective E. So before that, let's look into this important word called heterotrophic. Animals obtain nutritional requirements secondhand by either eating either plants, like sugarcane, potatoes, cabbage or animals that have eaten plants directly or indirectly like you get your meat from for example a cow that eats the grass and you get and you eat chicken eggs and they don't directly eat because their mom the chicken is the one that eats the the grains that's what we mean by indirectly so the this thing about obtaining nutritional requirements secondhand if this is what we call heterotrophic plants on the other hand is called autotrophic because they actually make their own food we don't make our own food we actually eat from other animals and plants so that's why we call ourselves heterotrophic and it's, that's why it's called secondhand um, eating getting your nutritional requirements secondhand so the heterotrophic diet we know that animals need these nutrients in their diet carbohydrate fat protein vitamins fiber minerals and water but for the animal to be healthy its diet must contain these constituents so when we talk about constituents we're talking about the nutrients so this word can come up in the exam make sure that you know constituent it refers to carbs fats proteins vitamins fiber minerals and water and for us to be healthy, we need to have all of them in the correct amount. That means no more, no less, just in the right amount. So this is what the word diet comes from. It 
is the kind of food that a person or an animal or community habitually eats. That means this is what, how much do you eat and what do you actually eat. For the diet to be balanced and healthy, you need to have correct amount of everything. A balanced diet, you can define it as this one, which is a diet that has the correct amount of each constituent, or you can use this definition. A balanced diet is a diet in which all the components needed to maintain health are present in appropriate proportions. So if you look at the ones that I highlighted, you, we use diet and then correct amount is the same as present in appropriate proportions. And of each constituent, it actually means all the components needed. So now we are going to look into 5.1 nutrients, learning objective D. And why is it that we need to have the correct amount of everything? So in this learning objective, we actually learn about diseases and describing the symptoms of those diseases resulting from deficiencies. Deficiencies mean that you are deficient of those things. You don't have enough of those things. So the disease names that we're going to learn is these scurvy rickets, osteoporosis and anemia. And symptoms means that if what are the signs if, for those diseases? Like what kind of evidence can we see? So these are the main four deficiency diseases for vitamin C. You get scurvy, vitamin D rickets, calcium is also rickets, and iron, the deficiency disease, is called anemia. Step to success today, list out all the names of the diseases and list out all the symptoms that you can find. So let's look into the deficiency diseases lacking in vitamin C. So a diet that lacks in vitamin C will result in the disease called scurvy. The symptoms for this bleeding gums and wounds not healing properly. Fun fact is that scurvy is actually known as the explorer's sickness before and what they found out was oranges and lemons are used to treat scurvy. It's because scurvy comes from a diet that lacks in vitamin C and back then sailors and pirates and they had to go to the sea for long periods of time and they didn't have much fruits so a lot of the sailors actually got scurvy okay next is the deficiency diseases lacking in vitamin D so there are two parts for this so in children this disease usually they'll get is rickets if children don't have enough vitamin D. So this, the symptoms for this is that growing bones become very soft, causing either bowed legged or knocked knees. Bowed leg means that it kind of goes like a bow, a bow, bow tie, for example. So it comes out. So this is what normal legs look like. So this is at rest. This is how they look like. They're not taking their... They didn't do this on purpose. That's them resting their legs and it's already bowed. So this is an example of bowed leg. And knocked knee is that it's on the opposite way instead. So going inside like that. For adults, if adults don't have enough vitamin D, they can get this disease called osteoporosis, which is weak and brittle bones. The bones will actually break because they are porous. So having pores mean that there's like a lot of holes in your bones. So let's have a look at this right here. So let's look into the bone anatomy first. This is the function of the bone anatomy is about how it looks, but let's look into the function first. The bone is used to support the body structurally. This means it gives you shape and kind of helps you to stand. It protects your organs. So some of your vital organs, like your lungs, are actually covered um, you actually have the rib cage protecting it and it helps you to move. It provides an environment for the bone marrow where blood cells are actually created and they act as storage areas for minerals like calcium. So this is the bone anatomy and you can see, oh I can't find my mouse, okay, right here. So you can see 
um, that the bone marrow is right here in the middle and the bone itself is made up of like compact bone which is this, this really thick part right here the really hard part and also spongy bone which is like in the middle here that creates those little pores so the bone marrow can be found in the middle and you can also see blood vessels here giving blood here and bone marrow here actually makes blood cells too so for people with let's start with normal people first for people who have normal and healthy bones the pores right here it's not very big but people who have osteoporosis who lacks in vitamin d have really big pores right here and if you imagine this one is kind of like easier to break because there's lots of spaces here but over here it's much more stronger because there's more structure there so this is why people need vitamin d and that's why it's called porous bones because it's like much more holes there deficiency diseases lacking in calcium is quite similar to vitamin d as well because they're for strong bones and teeth and for children um there's rickets which is growing bones become soft causing either bowed leg or knock knee so that's the same um but another one for children is stunted growth so this means that the skeleton doesn't form properly stunted growth means reduced growth rate so that means that they are not going to grow bigger and their bones are not going to grow bigger either deficiency diseases lacking in iron you get anemia which the symptoms are insufficient hemoglobin in red blood cells so iron is needed to make hemoglobin in red blood cells so let's look into hemoglobin and the structure here hemoglobin you know that it's a protein and if you remember our lesson before um that protein is it has like a 3d shape um and this is the 3d shape of the hemoglobin it's not um i don't I don't think it's an enzyme it's a pigment so here inside the hemoglobin protein you have oxygen molecules here and it's actually attached to this red stuff here this is called the heme group and the protein part is called the globin group hemoglobin molecule has two parts called the heme and the globin so the heme is this reddish part right here and the globin is the big protein part Globin is a protein which is like bricks and mortar for the house, so it provides a structure for hemoglobin. And the heme is the disc within the glo globin protein and holds a single atom of iron. So I, I would take that green color, there is iron in the center. And what this heme part does is that it actually helps to bind to oxygen molecules. And so for oxygen molecule, there's four heme group in one in one of these hemoglobin. So four oxygen molecule can be bound to one hemoglobin molecule. And there's about 250 million hemoglobin per red blood cells. So sometimes when you want to donate your blood, you kind of need to check whether or not you have a lot of, I think it's called HB. So I think that relates to your hemoglobin count. So if you are pretty healthy and you have a really good hemoglobin count, you can definitely donate your blood to people who are really in need. Right now, they really need people to donate blood, especially at Ripa's Hospital right now. Okay, let's go back to hemoglobin. Okay, so we know that iron is needed. So iron is, remember that green part right there, and it's needed to help make these hemoglobin molecules hemoglobin can be found in red blood cells and you need it to actually make red blood cells so if you don't have enough iron you're not going to have enough red blood cells so you get anemia you can see here this is a picture of a normal healthy person versus a person who is anemic and there is smaller blood red blood cells and also not a lot and people don't have enough blood red blood cells i mean um, they lack a lot of energy because remember that red blood cells help to transport oxygen and the oxygen is needed for respiration and if you don't if you can't respire then that means that not if you can't respire enough then you lack a lot of energy 
If you can't respire at all, then that means that's not good. Okay. The severe case is here. So if they don't have enough energy, they can it can lead to a coma or even, like I said, not good. Because it can lead to death when you don't have energy or enough energy at all. So that is the end of deficiency diseases. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening.